Good morning, Year 7. Today's lesson, we are going to be focusing on ecotourism, so please copy the title. Now let's look at the definitions in keywords. Ecotourism, a sustainable form of tourism aimed at protecting the environment and local cultures. It's also called green tourism. Now, this type of tourism, which has grown worldwide, is very different to mass tourism. And we are going to look at ecotourism versus mass tourism in St. Lucia, which is a Caribbean island that is looking to promote and develop the ecotourist industry sector. Ecotourism is different to mass tourism, and we really need to consider the environment and local cultures of the places where the tourists are visiting. And notice that the tourists are sensitive to the country that they are visiting as well. So let's look at the second key word in definition, sustainability, meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of generations to meet their own needs. How much impact does the tourist industry have in the area? Please press pause now and copy the key terms. So what exactly is ecotourism? Well, on the screen now you have two figures of ecotourist resorts. One in Botswana and one in South India. Do you will notice that they share similar features? So, for example, ecotourism resorts don't have permanent buildings. This means that there will not be the same level of visual pollution that we saw in the previous lessons of Benidorm where there are huge, huge hotels which dominated the landscape. The buildings that we can see in the figures can be easily dismantled and moved if necessary. We can also see that they are very small in size. Huge areas of forest and huge areas of land are not being destroyed due to the size and nature of these buildings. We don't have to clear huge areas to place particular buildings. And that means we can protect these habitats and not damage the habitats in the area. Certainly in figure two, we can see that the buildings aren't connected to the local water supply. And if you remember, when we looked at Benidorm, when I spoke about the golf holidays in Benidorm, we spoke about the high level of water usage for the resort and how that could have a negative impact on the area, especially areas which are particularly dry. And we can see here that these ecotourist resorts are not connected to the local water supply. So therefore, that means that there is enough water for the animals and the local indigenous people who live in these particular areas. These are small resorts and they are unlikely to have huge numbers of tourists and all the associated problems that you get with a huge number of tourists, such as noise pollution from the congestion and people going to bars at the beach. You're not going to have the problems of litter, the air pollution, all the transport that will be going on. So for small resorts, the number of people will also be small. So in today's lesson, we will be looking at tourism in a particular place, and that place is St. Lucia. St. Lucia is located in figure four, which gives us an idea of where it is located in the world. So here is the UK, and we can see that St. Lucia is across the Atlantic, and it's placed in the Caribbean, just here. We can see that St. Lucia is a tiny Caribbean island between the Atlantic Ocean and the Caribbean Sea. So what is St Lucia like? Well, the Caribbean is a very attractive place for tourists and it draws many tourists from around the world. The climate is lovely and warm. You have beautiful sandy beaches and you can see one of those in figure five. We can see a lovely diverse landscape. We can see the volcanic mountains of St Lucia in the background of figure five. We have a deep tropical vegetation as can be seen in the images. And we can see in figure six, a tourist resort on the island, which has beautiful sea views. Now, 
Something to bear in mind is that St Lucia is one of the least developed islands. The government is keen to develop the tourist sector further, to compete with other areas nearby, such as Jamaica, which is a much bigger tourist sector, or the Dominican Republic. So St Lucia is considering developing tourism and encouraging tourism on a wider scale than it currently has. So figure seven and eight show some of the reasons why people would want a holiday in St Lucia. So from figure seven, we can see a lovely landscape of the undeveloped east coast of the island to figure eight where we can see the scuba diver who has gone into the ocean to see the coral reefs that are plentiful in the ocean around St Lucia. Now all of these are key reasons as to why people would want a holiday and why the government wants to develop tourism. If they can encourage more tourists to the island then they can increase the number of jobs on the island Therefore, the government will have increased amount of spending that they can spend on public services and infrastructure such as roads, etc, which will lead to more development on the island and a further increase in tourist numbers. St Lucia itself is looking to develop its island so they can compete with other Caribbean islands such as Jamaica and the Dominican Republic. So here is a fact file about St Lucia. You will need this information. I'm going to pick out some main points before you study it in greater detail. So we already know the location of St Lucia is in the Eastern Caribbean. It sits between the Atlantic Ocean and the Caribbean Sea. We mentioned before that this is a mountainous volcanic island and we can see the steep relief of the land here in this image. We mentioned that the climate is tropical and we can see that this is a big pool for many tourists and we can see them coming in the cruise ships here. This is a small island with an overall population of just 173,765 people. Its GDP per capita is important because this is something they are trying to work on and improve by developing the tourist sector and that GDP is £4,600. Now that puts it, if you think back to our development work that we have done earlier in the year, it puts it right on the border between being a developing country and an emerging country. So tourism is 48% of the GDP, which is nearly half the income made for the government by the island. You can see how important tourism is. By trying to increase tourism, the idea is they increase the GDP of the country. So we can also see that there are other industries in St Lucia taking place. So for example, there are bananas, there's tourism, light manufacturing, there's offshore banking. Now, I don't mean they drop the money into the sea, which is what it sounds like. Offshore banking means that people can put their money into bank accounts in St Lucia and avoid paying tax on their savings in the country they actually live in. So rather than put your money into a UK bank, you would put your money into a bank in St Lucia. And this saves me as the saver, it saves me money. So this all helps to develop the island because it brings money into the island. There is good infrastructure and an educated workforce. The main tourist season runs from January to April. And after that, we have the rainy season, which runs through from May all the way up to November. However, people will still holiday during that time as well. And we can see that beach resorts and cruise ships are a big pull for tourists in the area. Now, it's worth reading the other attractions as to why people want a holiday in St Lucia. So if you have a read through and then move on to the next task, press pause now to complete this task. Now St Lucia is an island in the Caribbean which hasn't developed tourism to the same extent as other places in the region such as Jamaica and Dominican Republic. The government is looking at ways to develop the tourist industry and improve the GDP and employment figures on the island. We can see from this map that the island kind of splits between being developed 
and quite undeveloped in other areas. So let's just have a look at this map. If we use our compass to figure out which side we are looking at, so north, east, south and west, if we notice that the hotels are shown to us in red circles and what we can tell straight away is that along the west coast we do see some development, although some areas of the west coast are more developed than others. It's along the east coast which faces the Atlantic Ocean where we can see that the areas are undeveloped and it has a series of unspoilt bays facing the Atlantic Ocean well away from the existing tourist areas, which we can see that have some protected forest reserves, which will be dense forest in the centre of the island. They have been protected to protect the habitat that are found within them. Now, if we look at the northwest of the island, we can see that this is the most developed area. There are hotels, which are large tourist complexes. There is a hotel with 284 luxury rooms, pools, restaurants, spa, water sports, and even an English pub. So we may have some concerns. Thinking back to our previous work on Benidorm, having things like English pubs and having huge hotels, that can cause problems in terms of noise pollution, loss of culture. So that is something to bear in mind. It feels a bit when we read this that we are experiencing mass tourism when we focus on the northwest part of the island. Now, as we move down to the central western parts here, just here you can see that we've got small ecotourist resorts. Now, they are like the early images we saw in the ecotourist resort with non-permanent buildings. You can see here it says that there are no TVs, no radios, no air conditioning. So these resorts which are protecting or looking after the environment, they're attracting environmentally aware tourists who are going to be respectful to the area. They're going to not take part in water sports, which causes noise pollution and can damage coral reefs and so on. They're going to be aware of the local area and one sees some of its natural beauty in small numbers. As we go further south then, we end up at some smaller beach resorts, which include villas, suites and guest rooms on the slope covered by forest next to a beautiful beach, which specialise in diving and water sports. This particular place, we would have fairly wealthy individuals who will be taking part in water sports like jet skiing, diving, to see the coral reefs and the range officially, which can be found within the ocean here. So what is your task today? Well, you have a decision to make, and this is a decision regarding how you can increase tourist numbers on the island and therefore increase job opportunities which leads to an increase in disposable income coming into the island and therefore increasing the revenue the government receives, which increases the GDP, increases the taxes paid to the government and allows them to spend money developing infrastructure such as schools and hospitals, which will help in the overall development of St Lucia and will again increase numbers of tourists visiting. So this is a cycle the government want to introduce that repeats itself over and over again and improves the development of the country. So let's read the main activity. You have been given the role of an advisor to the St Lucian government. You have three possible options for developing tourism further on the island. You must decide on the best, most sustainable option and then produce a report explaining why this option is best. You can see the three options on the left hand side of the screen, but we are now going to go through the three options separately. So let's have a look at option one and how option one will increase tourist numbers and potentially the GDP. Develop a large tourist complex on the west coast of the island, like the complex in the north. So option one wants to build a large tourist complex, very much like the one that we have here. So that new tourist complex is going to replicate what is already here. Large permanent hotels will be built. New roads will open the area. A new airport will be built on the west coast. So huge numbers of tourists can arrive. 
So that is clearly an attempt to develop mass tourism on the island. And I want you to consider what problems these roads and permanent hotels and new airports might create in the area. But also counter that with what could be the huge benefits of mass tourism to this western part of the island. Think of the jobs created, disposable income coming in. Remember, disposable income isn't income or money that we throw away. It's money that we have left over to spend on ourselves and our families after we have paid our bills. Think of the money that the government will be able to make and how that could develop the island further. So let's keep reading. The holidays will cater for families, couples and young people looking for adventure. Water sports and snorkeling will be a key feature. Now let's consider how water sports will affect the development of the area because it will attract people, but we also need to think of the negatives of water sports and snorkeling in the oceans and coral reefs. Many of the hotels will be foreign owned and could be booked through travel companies in the UK, for example. Now, we haven't mentioned this in the past, but this could be a problem for the island. If the hotels are foreign owned by companies outside of St. Lucia, then it will be the companies outside that will make the money. Just travel companies based in the UK. So for example, when you book your holiday, the money or the greatest amount of profit will probably end up in the UK travel company. It won't end up going to the island or to the workers in the hotels, meaning that although the island will be making money, it won't be making it as quickly as it could if lots of money is being lost to foreign owned companies and foreign owned travel companies. And these foreign owned companies and foreign owned travel companies are based all around the world, not just in the UK. Option two is to develop a small eco-tourist resort in the undeveloped east coast of the island. This will be environmentally aware and eco-tourists will visit who care about the environment and will be aware of the damage that tourism can do. So they will not want to get involved in any of these activities that will damage the environment, such as snorkeling and water sports that we have seen in option one. Permanent hotels will not be built here. They're going to be lodges like the one you can see here. Therefore, they are not going to have the visual pollution. We aren't going to be connected to the mains water supply and using local water. Only a small number of tourists will be allowed. There's a good thing in terms of noise pollution and congestion and so on. However, not so good in terms of making money and increasing GDP for the government and for the country. There will be no shops or restaurants. Again, it's good in terms of visual pollution. We don't need to destroy lots of trees and so on to develop the shops because they aren't going to be developed. But how do you think here without shops and restaurants, are we going to be able to create as many jobs and as much money as you would like? The care for the environment. That's important because these eco tourists might be doing things like cleaning litter from the beaches that might get washed up on the Atlantic Ocean along the East Coast. Jobs will be created to guide, so there will be many jobs and tourists will be encouraged to only buy things from local people. This is a really positive thing and it's different to what we saw in option one. If they are only going to buy from local people, the money will go directly to the local people. Whereas with option one, some of the money was lost to foreign companies and not all the profits stayed in St. Lucia. On this occasion, the profit will all stay within St. Lucia because it, is, because it is going to local people. So money is staying in St. Lucia rather than being lost like it was in option one to foreign companies. And option three is to reject both options, one and option two, and instead leave things just as they are. The island already has tourist locations opening north of the island to increase tourist numbers and this will cause more harm than good. But does that really meet the requirements of the government which is looking to increase tourist numbers on the island? That will be for you to decide. Here you have a table. Please copy it into your books because you're going to fill it in to help you decide which option of the three is best. Press pause now to copy the table. 
So what we will be doing is we will be scoring each of the options against the criteria on the left hand side of our table. So these are the different aspects that we want the options to meet. So let's think of our remit. What does the government need to do? We need to create jobs on the island and we do not want to create visual pollution. And what we are going to do is go through each option individually and we are going to score each of the options against each piece of the criteria. Four is fully successful. So this means it meets the government criteria. Two is partially successful and you can score in between as well. So you can see here you have threes, you have ones and you have a zero. So let's look at the first one together. So for option one, it will create jobs on the island. It will develop a large tourist complex on the west coast of the island, like the complex in the north. Large permanent hotels will be built. New roads will open the area. A new airport will be built on the west coast. So huge numbers of tourists can arrive. While this is clearly going to create a lot of jobs, which is a good thing, the massive hotels are going to have jobs, building the roads will have jobs, there are jobs in the airport, jobs created for bus drivers and taxi drivers moving, moving the tourists about. We are going to see a lot of jobs created for this and also a lot of jobs in the water sports industries with snorkeling, which we can see here. So I would say that is very successful or fully successful. It meets the government criteria. So I'm going to score it a four. We are going to get lots of jobs. We're going to create lots of taxes and the government is going to make lots more money and they are going to be able to use that money to develop the island further. The next criteria we are looking at is that it will not cause visual pollution. We've got large permanent hotels being built that are going to change the landscape of the island quite considerably. So one could argue that it will cause some visual pollution. Whether you want to go with it being a naught, being completely unsuccessful, or a one, which is very unsuccessful, is entirely up to you. Some people might say that these hotels are fairly modern. They aren't that ugly. It all comes down to personal opinion. So there is no right or wrong with this. So I'm going to score will cause visual pollution a one. Very unsuccessful in meeting the government criteria because I think the development does change the island quite a lot. The next criteria that we are looking at is noise pollution. We'll just have a look at this. Develop a large tourist complex on the west coast of the island, like the complex in the north. Large permanent hotels will be built. New roads will open the area. A new airport will be built on the west coast. So huge numbers of tourists can arrive. There will be water sports. I think we can safely say that the noise level, the noise pollution, is going to increase significantly with option one. Consider all the road traffic, all the air traffic, the jet skis in the water. This together is all going to create lots of extra noise. Therefore, I'm going to score this a zero. It's going to create noise pollution, therefore does not meet the government's criteria. Will not damage coral reefs. Let me remind you of our coral reefs, which we can see in the image. And we can see our snorkeler has gone to look at the coral reefs. And we can see that it's going to encourage snorkeling and water sports. Now, coral reefs are very delicate ecosystem. They are extremely fragile. If you're snorkeling and as you pass the coral, you accidentally touch the coral, it will bleach the coral, which means it will die. The coral will clearly be damaged because therefore I'm going to score this a zero because the coral will be damaged due to the snorkeler. It will not cause deforestation. Well, we're going to have large permanent hotels, 
new roads and a massive new airport. We're going to need to chop down trees to do that and clear some land before we're going to lose some habitats. And that is going to result in deforestation. So this should be a zero. It will not have an impact on the local water supply. Well, it will impact water as well. We're going to have permanent hotels. And we have touched on this before with ecotourism, not having permanent hotels and not being connected to the main water supply. When permanent hotels are connected to the main water supply, and we can see just here that there are swimming pools as well, therefore there is less water for local people and the wildlife in the area. So this should be a zero. Now, I'm going to stop there. I want you to finish up scoring the next three and add up your total to this. Then I would like you to complete option two and score it exactly the same as before you get your total and then do option three and score that one as well and get a total. So if you would like to pause the video now to complete this task. So here is an example of a completed table. It is OK if you have different results from me. Now, you can see here that option one, the hotel complex scored 13 points. Option two, the small eco tourist resort scored 28 points and option three scored 24 points. So the option which scored the highest points and meets the government my criteria of creating jobs, making money for the locals, and also making money for the government whilst having the least impact on the island is option two, which has the highest score. I will now show you how to write a report based on these findings. You will write a report based on whichever option got the highest score in your table. So you've completed your table and you have made your decision as to which option you think best. Did you choose one? the large tourist complex with hotels and swimming pools? Did you choose two, the small eco-tourist resort? Or did you choose three, to do nothing? So to complete this final activity, which is to decide about the impact of your option, you're now going to write about the option that got the highest score in your table. You're going to write about how your decision will affect the following stakeholders. You're going to write about how they feel about it. So let's read the task. Write a brief explanation. Now with explanation, it comes from the word explain. So that means you don't just write your points. I think that the unemployed local is happy or angry. You need to explain it and use the language, this is because. Write a brief explanation about how the following people may feel about your decision. Did you choose option one, option two or option three? So I chose option two, the small eco-tourist resort, which has jobs available for the locals. Now, I want to think about, I want to consider, is the staker going to be happy or angry with my choice? Would they have preferred another option? Are they happy that another option was not considered? So how will the local unemployed on the island feel? Will they feel there are enough jobs created for the locals? Maybe, maybe not. How will the government minister in charge of finance of the island feel? Now, all the money from option two will go to the government and not be sent abroad to foreign owned companies. But do you think the government will be satisfied with the lower amounts of money that option one, the large hotel complex could have provided? Finally, how do you think the environmentalist will feel? Now, an environmentalist is a person that wants to protect nature, protect the fragile ecosystem. So in this case, protect the forest and protect the coral as well, the coral reef. Will she be pleased that it's a small eco-tourist resort or angry that the fragile ecosystem is still being altered? Hmm, it's a lot to think about. Please write your three paragraphs, one for each of the stakeholders. If you need help, the next slide has starter sentences. So press pause now to complete this task. So here are some starter sentences if you would like to use them. Please feel free to write your own sentences if you prefer. And when you have finished this task, you have finished the lesson. Well done.